Hello everybody, Bentley Compost Guy, Christy here. What if I told you there was something that could speed up the vermicomposting process, getting you harvesting those beautiful worm castings that much more quickly? Something that could help you process even more waste materials, reduce or eliminate bad odors, make your worms feel much more at home, less inclined to roam. Something that could neutralize harmful gases and other hazardous compounds, lessen the chance of pest outbreaks, and just generally something that would help to keep your systems balanced and operating effectively. Maybe best of all, it's also something that could readily be obtained for free. Would this sound too good to be true? Well, of course, it's not too good to be true. There is a group of materials that can do all these things and more. We're talking today about what I refer to as living materials. This is a topic I've been writing about for close to a decade and a concept that's now at the heart of all my vermicomposting and vermiculture activities. In a nutshell, living materials or LMs are stable micro bridge materials that have gone at least part way through an aerobic decomposition process. The key word there is stable. We're not just talking about any organic waste that's been colonized by microbes. Rotting food waste is absolutely not the sort of living material I'm referring to. Usually living materials will either be something that's humus rich, such as various forms of compost, or resistant carbon rich materials that have been allowed to rot for a period of time. Perhaps more commonly, it will be some sort of combination of the two. Clear as mud? Well, don't worry, we will be looking at different examples and you should have a solid grasp of the concept by the end of the video. Generally speaking, living materials are going to be darker in color. They're going to have a rich, earthy smell and they may show at least some signs of decomposition, things like fungal growth, things like that. Generally, they should not have any sort of foul or even a strong odor. They shouldn't be water rich or colorful. It sounds kind of funny, but just anything that's sort of an intact waste material that still has some color, nothing like that. And they definitely shouldn't be coming out of a bag or a box from the store. This is a natural material we're talking about. My keen interest in living materials began back when I had the opportunity to start working with aged bedded horse manures. Not only were the outdoor heaps of this stuff often absolutely loaded with redworms, which is a very good sign in itself, but the material just seemed to have an almost magical effect on my home worm bins. Kitchen scraps seemed to get processed a lot faster. Odors were eliminated. Even though there were lots of organisms in the material, everything just seems perfectly balanced. There were no outbreaks of mites, fruit flies, these types of annoying pest organisms. And the worm population seemed to thrive like never before. Over the years, I've tested out various other materials with some of the same properties, and I've seen similar results. The secret lies primarily in the rich, diverse community of micro and macro organisms and this humus. The mind-boggling number of aerobic microbes found in these materials greatly assist with the decomposition process as well as converting potentially harmful gases and other compounds into something more worm friendly. It's been said there's something like a billion or more microbes in a rich teaspoon of garden soil. So just imagine what you're adding with a few handfuls of rich compost or leaf mold. The larger organisms, which actually usually aren't very large at all, pretty tiny, help to establish a balanced ecosystem of consumers, which are the ones that help the worms, and predators, which are helpful for keeping these smaller consumers in check. Humus, which is that dark, rich, earthy smelling stuff I'm sure most of us are familiar with, is loaded with beneficial microbes and is highly absorbent. It can act as a sort of filter and sponge. It soaks up and holds moisture, and has countless microsites for nutrient retention and taking care of these hazardous compounds. Okay, let's look at some of the prime examples of living materials. Number one, aged bedded livestock manures. As touched on, it was old bedded horse manure that first got me excited about this LM concept. 
Horse manure and anything similar is particularly good because it's already pretty bulky and fibrous. The key with any manure is to make sure that it's mixed with bedding materials, things like straw or wood shavings, heaped up in an outdoor location where it's exposed to the elements and it's allowed to compost or at least age for probably a month or more. Again, it should be quite dark and earthy smelling, not something that looks and smells like manure. Newer manure mixes can be excellent worm foods, there's no doubt about it, but that's not what we're talking about here. Number two is compost, vermicompost, or the bulky screen material from either one of these processes. This is one that many of you should have access to once you've been vermicomposting or composting for at least a few months. Finished compost and vermicompost themselves can be great, but I'm guessing that most people would prefer to use them in the garden. So that's why these bulky screenings can be a better choice with the added bonus that these materials can also add a beneficial structural element to your systems as well. Number three, decompose leaf litter or leaf mold. Look down in the bottom of a pile of fall leaves that have been sitting for a long time or at the material down on the bottom of the forest floor. And you should be able to find lots and lots of dark, rich smelling stuff that's yet another great example of living material. If you wanna make this material self, a great way to speed up the process would be just to lay down some fall leaves out on your lawn and to run over it with a mulching mower. Of course, you wanna have the bag attached. This material can be moistened somewhat, allowed to sit for a number of months and you should end up with some really, really nice stuff. It's just important to note that the fresh material is very different than the stuff that you're going to be taking from the pile months later. Again, dark, earthy smelling is what we're after. Number four, rotten, carbon-rich materials. Leave some bales of straw or a heap of wood chips sitting outdoors for many months and you will end up with some really, really nice living material. And again, back to this structural element, because it's very tough, resistant materials, you also add a nice bit of structure to your habitat. So it's another benefit of these more resistant materials. I'm sure a lot of you are gonna be wondering about soil. Can soil be used as a living material? This is definitely a gray area. The answer is it depends. I strongly suggest that you don't use, number one, any form of mineral soil. Typical garden soil with a lot of sand or clay, etc. This is definitely not what I'm talking about. They're heavy, they can tend to impede airflow, not good for a worm composting bin. Maybe a little bit of rock dust here and there, that's fine, but these heavy regular soils, definitely not. Number two, bagged potting soil. They may be dark in color, maybe even have an earthy smell, but this is not what we're after. For one thing, these are very often going to be pretty much sterile. And for another thing, they can also have fertilizer salts in them, which are very harmful for your worms. So what sort of soil could possibly work? Well, I would say that any form of lightweight soil that's rich in organic matter, that's been kind of sitting outside for a while, this is something that might work. Something like a nice loamy soil that comes from a raised bed, a handful or two of this could be beneficial for a worm composting system. Now coming back to what I said earlier about living material not coming out of a store-bought bag or a box. Well, we talked about the potting mixes, but this could also include anything like a bagged manure, a bagged compost. Again, these can be pretty sterile. These are going to tend to be quite dense and heavy and they again they can they can also have concentrations of salts in them which are going to be harmful for your worms and please whatever you do don't run out and buy one of these ridiculous compost accelerator types of products do you really think that these packets of white powder at close to fifty dollars no less presumably made in some sort of factory or lab, are going to be a better choice than this beautiful, dark stuff created by Mother Nature herself. I don't think so, and I'm sure that most of you would agree. Okay, time for a quick review. Living material is stable, microbrich organic matter that has gone at least partway through an aerobic decomposition process. It is often dark in color with a rich, earthy smell. 
It's not just any organic waste with microbes. Again, absolutely not talking about unprocessed materials like your typical kitchen scrubs. Prime examples include well-aged bedded manures, various types of compost or vermicompost or their screenings, decomposed leaf litter, or rotten wood chips, straw, cardboard, these sorts of carbon-rich, tough materials that have been allowed to sit and break down for a period of time. Some lightweight, rich organic soils could be okay in moderation, but you want to stay away from the heavy mineral soils, the ones that have a lot of clay or sand in them, and the bag soils, which are usually pretty sterile and can contain fertilizer salts. Generally, any other type of packaged activator or accelerator or these bag composts and manures, these aren't going to be good either, okay, for a lot of the same reasons. In my next living material video, I will talk about different ways to use and benefit from living materials and will also explain the difference between what I call primary living materials and secondary living materials. Hope you found this helpful. Don't hesitate to let me know if you have any questions or comments. Thanks for watching and we'll talk again soon.